Nick Christoph, let's start with you. In your latest column, you tell the story of a chemistry professor in Kansas who was arrested last week in front of his family. And I'm looking for, uh, here we go. Uh, I, I tweeted out part of your column yesterday. Uh, and the response uh, to your column has been incredible. This is the quote, agents handcuffed a beloved chemistry professor as he was leaving home to drive his daughter to school. They warned his crying wife and children, ages seven to 14, that they would be arrested if they tried to hug him goodbye. And the response to that, Nick, from conservatives, independents, and liberals alike, all the same. This is not the America that we grew up in. Yeah, that's right, Joe. I mean, there's this disjunction between how the immigration crackdown has been sold, which as a, is as a way to control these uh, murderers, rapists, bad hombres, and what is actually unfolding often at the grassroots. And, uh, you know, there are indeed some pretty tough people who are being uh, seized and deported. But many of them are people like Professor Syed Jamal, the person I wrote about, a guy who's been in the U.S. for 30 years, who is a distinguished chemistry professor, a volunteer at the local schools, he even ran for the local school board. And, and this is about the least dangerous man in America. And if you look at, you know, who is at danger from this crackdown, it's his three American citizen children. And, you know, what will happen to them if he is deported? Um, they will be devastated. And that is so often what is happening around the country, that in this rush to arrest and deport people, uh, even those who have no, no history of any kind of criminal action, um, then it's these American citizen children whose lives are destroyed by this process. So, Nick, the, uh, he, so this Kansas professor is leaving home to drive his daughter to school. The ICE agents swoop in. They arrest him. Why in the world, and this is what so many people don't understand, they don't understand the arrest, but also why do these agents who are American citizens themselves, why do we have people in our government telling children, seven-year-old children, that they will be arrested if they try to hug their father goodbye? Boy, I wish I could understand that. And, you know, and the family is struggling to understand why the arrest happened at all. Uh, Professor Jamal had a temporary work permit. He was reporting regularly uh, to ICE. He had reported to ICE most recently earlier in January. And, you know, he wasn't in hiding. Uh, there was no reason to go through this. But all of a sudden, uh, ICE changed its uh, exercise of discretion. And instead of allowing him to stay because he was perceived as an asset to the community, they swooped down. Uh, he was in the car in his driveway driving his daughter. They tapped on the window, asked if he was Syed Jamal, uh, ordered him to step out and handcuffed him in, in front of his family in front of his crying family. Yeah. Uh, so, Victoria, um, this weekend I saw a, a study uh, by Pew that showed that immigration, illegal immigration into the United States is flatlined since Barack Obama became president in 2009. In fact, in many years it has decreased. Add on top of that the fact that Mexican illegal immigration to the United States has dropped and that non-Mexican immigration to the United States, illegal immigration, has actually increased. It makes everything that Donald Trump said in the campaign about the border with Mexico, about the wall with Mexico, to be just as preposterous as we all said it was during the campaign. And yet, he continues to do it, and we see him now dragging beloved chemistry professors with work permits to jail uh, in a way that you would expect um, to happen in Turkey or Russia. Right. So 
What Donald Trump has done, he has villainized the immigrant. He has taken all empathy away from why immigrants come to the United States in the first place. But to just step back for a minute, immigration at its core is about economics. So it's about demand and it's about supply. In the United States, up until the Great Recession, there was a much greater demand for labor. So that's why we saw such high rates of immigration from Mexico, especially in other parts of the world. Once the recession hit, there wasn't that demand. And Mexican immigrants said, hey, why am I going to go to the United States and be unemployed? I might as well stay in Mexico and well, be unemployed. And, and, and That's Victoria, where we see those Victoria, numbers. Yeah, something else, Victoria, that, uh, of course, Donald Trump and the Republican Party would not like you to know is the fact that Barack Obama actually was pretty tough on illegal immigration. And even on legal immigration, he was constantly scolded by immigration groups as being too tough on illegal immigration and immigration in general. Well, Joe, I, I mean, I clearly remember the moniker of deporter in chief. And there was a lot of anger at Barack Obama among the Latino community because of that. So what we saw was a dampening of immigration, both because the demand was going down and Barack Obama in an attempt to try to get a comprehensive immigration reform said, look, I'm going to show that I'm tough on immigration. But then the Republicans never came through in providing that comprehensive immigration reform. Yeah. Nick. Well, Joe, it seems there are at least two men working in the White House until recently who were a bigger danger to Americans than the man who was just handcuffed by ICE in front of his kids. We have here Joe Califano who has a new book out about our damaged democracy. And Joe, you talk a little bit about uh, there are reasons why our government has come to a standstill. Uh, tell us, you know, the three uh, branches of government. We have the presidency, the Congress, and the courts. How is each one being brought to a stand Thank you. standstill? Thank uh, you. What's happened is the presidency has become the most powerful of, these, of all these organizations, overwhelming the others. The president is now the chief legislator. For every law Congress passes, the president produces about 20 or more regulations. Uh, the president has sent uh, presidents for 50 years, have sent 100,000 people to their death in war, Americans, and uh, uh, wounded another million without any declaration of war. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably people under 40 in this country don't even know that Congress has, has the exclusive right to declare war. <laughs> uh, and, 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 uh, and the president is, the staff is monumental. It's hundreds and hundreds of people. He's running a state-run media. I mean, uh, whitehouse.gov, YouTube, around the clock. Uh, th this is a massive operation with hundreds of people running it. So that's, that's more typical of a dictatorship or a monarchy than it is of a democracy. Congress, on its side, is crippled. Uh -huh. uh, they are, they, they, for the last 20 years, they, they, with rare exception, they haven't passed appropriations bills. They just passed continuing resolutions, which gives the president a lot of power and the special interest with money to get all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, Congress also uh, has become a pay-to-play organization. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a whole table in the back of the book of what each Democrat was required to contribute in the 2013. It's the same one for the Republicans. We couldn't get it leaked out. But we're talking about, you know, you want to be chair of a key committee, it's a half a million if you're a Democrat. You have to raise money. Right. Yeah, you have to raise 700,000, 800,000 if you're a Republican, as, as, uh, as Joe well knows. And, uh, yeah. And, and the, the courts, uh, the courts have been politicized. Uh, it starts with the Supreme Court. I mean, from the moment of the nomination, Donald Trump is, and, and all his predecessors for the last 20 years or 30 years now, want, I want a guy that's going to vote just the way I want him to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the last uh, 10 years uh, and 50 occasions, the court has split by, along party lines, 4-4 four, four with Kennedy. Of being the guy that is the balance, right? And even, so, the, so, and even the federal, the local federal courts on right. the issue of immigration. Just think about this: if you want to block a, a, a Donald Trump's immigration plan, uh, you go to you go to a, a San, San Francisco to a federal district judge, or Bill Oreck, big Democratic contributor, he'll take care of you. Nationwide injunction. Right, if so you want to block Obama's immigration plan, you go to East Texas. Where the case yep. went to a judge who was against so, immigration. So, Mr. Califano, let, let, let me ask you this question: How, how do we? How do you compare uh, the, the state of our democracy under Richard Nixon in '73 
and 74. With the state of our, our democracy, our constitutional republic in 2017, 2018. Well, I think Richard Nixon made a you know a, a run at a, a, a consti a, totally against the Constitution, uh, as we both know. And I, I was very, as you know, I was very in the Washington Post and the Democratic Party in those days. I think what's happened. What I'm writing about now is these are systemic problems that president after president. You know, Ronald Reagan was the first president to, when he signed a bill to say, I'm not going to follow this provision. Uh, I'm not going to enforce this provision. Every single president has done that uh, with respect to provisions and laws right. they don't agree with and don't like. We have, we have a very serious problem here that goes to the whole way our system works and the, and the partisanship. I mean, with all due respect, Schiff and Nunes, they can't talk to each other. They write a memo to the FBI yeah. that the president has to clear. Now they're going to build a wall between their staffs. We, 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 have, we have fundamental systemic problems that threaten our democracy. Right. And we've got to get people, we've got to get better people. People don't want to run. It's a savage climate out there. There's so uh, damn much fake news, as you well know and have often reported. Uh, right. So, so it's very important that yeah. our people, in my judgment, they, they've got to get, get in at the beginning of the primaries. One example. Right. Hillary Clinton they're, they're, got the Republican nomination with 8% uh, of, the, of the registered Democrats. Democratic Donald Trump. Trump got the Republican nomination with 7% of the registered Republicans. And that's what we face. We faced an egomaniac and, and, a, and a woman who wasn't really offering much. All right. Thank you so much. The new book, Our Damaged Democracy, We the People Must Act. Joseph Califano, thank you so much. And, and, Christoph, and vote in primaries, let, Joe. Vote in primaries. Get there on, you know, on the ground, as, right. as you well know, because exactly. it's better than anyone here. But vote in primaries. You're exactly right. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Nick Kristoff, uh, so, so where are we? Uh, right now in 2018. Where are we uh, when you, you look at certain polls and the overwhelming majority of Americans want DACA uh, recipients to be able to become legalized citizens of this country? Uh, and yet you see what the president of the United States is doing on that issue and so many others. Well, I mean, I think that the polls certainly are a factor that is going to make some kind of humane policy on DACA and on Dreamers more likely. But, you know, getting to Joe Califano's point, the challenge is not just leaders who overreach. The problem is also that we do have this grassroots uh, divide in this country, partly based on how we in the news media operate and the fact that everybody is tending to tune to new sources that confirm their own biases and prejudices and, and regarding the other side as uh, not just wrong, but often uh, a threat to the system. And I think that makes it a lot harder to reach uh, any kind of productive agreement on issues like DACA or on anything else. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Nicholas Kristof, thank you so much. We're obviously going to be reading your powerful column in the New York Times. Greatly appreciate you uh, writing it thank and you. being here. Vic Victoria, stay with us, if you will. Coming up next on Morning Joe, the president tweeted this morning that it's going to be a big week for infrastructure. The last time he tried Infrastructure Week, it was overshadowed by the Russia investigation and the president's own destructive tweets. This time, the effort's being done to try to overshadow a de domestic abuse scandal and a potential White House cover-up. Will the administration ever stop fighting? And will it stop getting in its way of its own headlines? Keep it right here on Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.